Welcome back everybody. So today we're going to take another look at our Calypso Smash Beer. Now this is an all grain brew in the bag Calypso and Great Western two row malt. If you haven't been following us, we started a small batch series. We're starting out with Smash Beer, so single malt, single hop, just to see what we can find out about malt and hops. Now, you might like some of them, you might not. Now, in this, what we're trying to do is see both the malt and the hop. Uh, so this one is an older one. Um, this was bottled on 427, so today is 7-2. Uh, so uh, almost three or just over two months old. Recipe for this one was two pounds, 12 ounces of Great Western two row malt. Uh, Calypso was added at 30 minutes, 0.39, then again at five minutes, 0.29, then three days into fermentation, we added 0.32 ounces of Calypso. We've been doing that with all our smash beers, those hop times, our boil, so 30 minutes, five minutes, then a dry hop. So we use one ounce of hops, 1.25 gallons going into the carboy. This one did end at 7.1%. Now we're gonna hop around because obviously uh, beers are done at different times. So this is one of the earlier ones. So we were using that two point or two pounds, 12 ounces of grain or two and three quarters pounds of grain. And some of them we have dialed back as the malt was taking over. Now that would show you in a five gallon batch that if you scaled that up, both of them up, the malt would be too heavy for the hops. Now some of these hops also will play better with other hops. So it'll help out if you do use other hops. But in a smash beer, we're just trying to see if we can get the hop flavor and what the grain is doing. So on my notes, uh, Calypso is an aroma flavor hop, uh, pleasant and fruity. Go ahead and get this bottle open. <clears throat> um, from my numbers, just so you guys have them, uh, pre-boil was 1034. Uh, uh, original gravity was 1063. And on bottling day, it was about a 1030 or 7.25 bricks. Now, if you are using a refractometer, you will have to use a calculator uh, because that refractometer will not give you a true reading. Let's go ahead and get it in here. I can't remember what we found in... Uh, the other great Western malt that we did, uh, I, I can't remember what that pulled out. I do know the Viking was more honey. Uh, this is, I believe, the second tasting of this clip. So, so we'll see if that grain has faded or come up, or if the hops have come up and the or the hops have faded. Most likely, the hops are going to fade some, and that grain is going to come up. We do have a nice white head with a dog hair in there. Um, small medium bubbles, about a finger of head. If we look at the color, I would dark orange in color, hazy, probably chill haze, uh, medium bubble level coming up. We are using in the, the 12 ounce bottles, we are using uh, one carbonation drop. We've been playing around with that too uh, in the 25 ounce bottles using one or using two just to see what it does. Let's go ahead and get a smell. Getting some sweet malt, but I'm also getting some bitterness. Maybe a touch of citrus and fruit, but a, a sweet, not fully malt, but just a sweet smell in there. Sweet grain. It smells like a beer, maybe a touch of alcohol. It is 7.1%, so that ABV is creeping up for only using almost three pounds of grain. Let's go ahead and taste.
a little bit of malt in there, a little bit of bitterness, like maybe a touch of citrus bitterness, like grapefruit citrus in the back. It does seem like that malt is starting to take over a little bit. There is more sweetness than I thought, but the bitterness in back is big. Even in the aftertaste, it's like a grapefruit rind bitterness, very low. These Calypso hops are 14.9% alpha acids. So I would think that bitterness would stay around longer just because it's so high. Um, I don't know, I try not to look at anything we did before until after I'm done, uh, just so I'm going into this, okay, this is what it tastes like now. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're getting a lot of pleasant flavors, pleasant, you know, I'm thinking smooth, like they're forward in the beer, excuse me. Um, this does bring a lot of bitterness in the back. Uh, but it's not going to be very well balanced, I don't think, if you're doing it like we are for Smash Beers. Because we're, str we're trying to stick to around the same grain level and the same hop uh, uh, amounts just so we can see. We could play around with these all day as this is 14.9. We could put it in at 60 to bump the IBUs and then put them later in the boil, maybe five minutes and one minute or five minutes and flame out. Something like that to pull a different character out of there. Uh, it's just how long do we want to take these smash beers. Uh, we could also go back and change the malt in this, which we have been doing in a lot of the other ones. Uh, some that are coming up, we did it with Cascade. Uh, we did a Pilsner, a Two Row, uh, and a Vienna, so we can kind of compare them. But yeah, the amount of bitterness is big in the back, but for the 14.9 uh, alpha acids you would expect to get a lot more bitterness but I think that hot or that malt uh, has taken over a little bit and that's why you're getting so much up front yeah nice and smooth I think it's fine it's aging well I think we're gonna start seeing this one go down but it might be a good thing to bring out a little bit more malt in this one and those bitterness units go down or fade away a little bit next month uh, I think it's a little too high as that grapefruit rind is still on the back I'm not getting alcohol in this so that's good uh, but it's not I, I would say it's not balanced uh, but I don't think that pleasant fruitiness of the Calypso hops is coming through in this. I don't think it did in the first one either. But this would be something to use on a big like grapefruit, citrus, maybe double IPA uh, where those 14.9 uh, alpha acids could shine a little bit more and bring some more backbone to the beer. But yeah, definitely a good one to have. I mean, it's fine just how it is. Uh, but yeah, I would like to see uh, those bitterness, that bitterness in the back end of the palate to fade off a little bit and maybe some fruitiness to come out in front. I don't think we're going to get that now. But maybe p putting this with like a Citra, a Cascade, something like that might... Um, help it out and bring that bitterness grapefruit to the back but also leave you with something in front so if you like this video thumbs up if you don't thumbs down make sure you hit that bell and hit that subscribe button so you know when new videos are coming out and until next time happy brewing